seven JP four. This tube was used in a lot of the late 40s to around 1950 TVs. Getting rather hard to find. And a lot of times when you find one, the base will be bad. This is what the base looks like. You see the glue's all broken down. They get loose, these pins break. You can re-solder them and get the tube to work, if it's a good tube. But the problem with that is if you unplug it and plug it back in a few times, you take a chance on breaking these wires. And if you break one too close to the glass, then you've got a problem. So what I'm going to do today, this tube, all the wires are still intact. And the tube checks good. I have checked it before I go into all this trouble. I'm going to put a new base on. I found this on eBay. A fella had this for sale, these for sale, and wasn't sure if it was the right base for these tubes. But after conversing with him and taking some measurements, we were both pretty confident that this, this would work. And got it in this week, and it does work. It's, it's the right base for the tube. So I'm going to put this base on this tube. And I watched several guys do this. And I think the best one I've seen is where the fella solders wires on the end of each one of these wires. Feeds them through the new base. You put the base down on, get it seated good, and glue it. Where it's, where it's stationary. Then you unsolder the wires. And if you just heat the, the wire, it'll come come loose from these wires. And these are left that you can re-solder into each pin. So I've got it cleaned off pretty good. I think I'm about ready to try this. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder some wires on each one of these. And then We'll see if we can get them fed through that new socket and see how well this works. Before I put the wires on each one of these is I'm going to make sure where the filaments are. Okay. So these two, this is pin 14, this is pin 1. And I made a mark here. Oh, where 14 and 1 are. Alright, so we're going to get this tube in position where I can solder some wires on it. That'll be the next step. Okay. And the wires I'm going to be using is this telephone wire. It's the, the smaller of the telephone wire, but it is solid copper, so I'll just use these. I'm going to strip back several, probably a foot or two, and I'll cut these in half now to give me enough wires. All right, about ready to begin. So what I'm going to do is strip these back about halfway. That way when I pull the base on, I'll have a lot of bare copper wire sticking through the pins of the base. Then when I heat the pin or heat the wire, I can pull it out easy. If you leave the insulation on it, just make it harder to do. So there's the first one. And we just need to tin the wire. And we're going to start here on pin 14. All right. There's one of them, so we got nine more to go. And before I solder all of the wires on, I do clean the ends of these wires coming out of the base. Make sure that they'll accept solder. Okay, I got all the wires attached. All the wires attached to the wires. So now, I want to make sure that there's not any heavy solder, which that one there looks too heavy. 
because you want to make sure that they'll pull up through these pins. You don't want to glob a sorter where the wire's attached. So I think I'm okay. It looks like they are. So now we just need to feed the wires through the pins. And probably you could cut these shorter than what I did here. But they're kind of varying lengths, which is good. You can kind of feed one through, then the next longest one, and so forth, hopefully. I don't know. I've never done this before. We'll see how it works. Okay, this is our filament pins. See my mark there. This is 14. This is pin 1. So I'm going to put 14 through here first. And these are marked on the inside. You can see that. See if it says 14. So you can see that'll feed right through there. Just like we want. Then 1 is next. Just kind of feed them in as we go and pull them as we go. And then two is next. And in thinking this over, probably the insulation would be better if you pulled it all off. But I've already started this way, so we'll continue this way. And then here's three. And it starts to get a little busy here. You got all these wires pulling through. Now we just got to slowly pull them as we feed the socket or the base on. This is the base. The socket is the part that this plugs into. Keep calling it the socket, but this is the base. And I'm not getting in any hurry. I'm just making sure that we can get them all pulled through. And the closer you get, the easier it gets. I got one that's kinked there. Which one is that? Okay. It's this one. There we go. And when I'm finishing, I'm going to look in here and make sure. Watch that's hot. Make sure they're all tight. It feels like they are. feels pretty good. So now let's look and make sure we did it right. All right. There's one in 14, two, three, nothing on four, five, nothing on six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I can actually see those wires coming out of the base of the tube in each hole. So that's a good thing. When we, when we heat these, these will pull right off and then we can just solder the wires to the pins. Now, to keep this base tight after I get it put on, I'm going to put some silicone up under the edge of it. So the, the way I'll do that is just slide it back just a little Put some under the round the edge there, just enough to hold it tight. So when you plug it up and unplug it, it won't put any strain on those wires, and hopefully that'll keep it in good shape. What I'm going to use is just a waterproof sealant, silicone. 
I've also read online and watched the guys that have done this in the past say don't use epoxy because it's too brittle and when the tube heats up when it's working it can possibly crack the tube or bad things can happen so they recommend this silicone that's what I'm going to use I just squeeze a little bit out put it underneath the base like that and then when I slide it back down on there it will adhere to that silicone and then we got to let it dry like 24 hours to make sure it's set up Okay, I'm going to put one more little dab right over here. Right there. Alright. That should be more than enough to hold it. You don't have to put it solid. Or I don't think you do, so I didn't. So now we push it back down. off the excess there. I don't want to get it on that pretty new base. That looks nice, that blue base on that old tube. We're good for now. Uh, let that sealant dry up dry real good and then then I'll sort of the water so I don't want to do it to then because I want everything to be stable don't want anything moving around while I'm trying to solder on it it's been more than 24 hours since I put the base on the tube and it's silicone is dried and the base is tight so so now we're going to heat up each one of these wires and pull them out then we'll be ready to solder the wires from the tube into the base. All right, let's see how this works. I'll start here with 14. pulled out so now we just need to go back and solder the pins and should have it that solder seems to be going down in there very very well trying not to put too much or I won't won't have a glob there on the ends make it hard to plug in Okay, they're all soldered. Uh, I don't think I got any excess solder on the outside of the pins. They look look pretty good. And I'll save all my wires that I pulled off. Use them the next time I put a base on the tube. So now we're going to test this tube. Make sure that we're still working okay. Here's my test chassis that I checked my seven JP4s with. It's just a Motorola VT71. Uh, 
I have the cabinet for this chassis, but I already have one of these in my collection. So I just kind of keep this chassis out to check tubes with. Uh, you can check them. I have a Syncor CR70 that will check these tubes. And most of the time it's correct, but sometimes a tube will check okay and you'll hook it up to the chassis and it'll be washed out. You know, not much detail. So this is the best way to check. So I have it hooked up here. Just have the chassis turned this way where I can plug the tube in. And we'll flip our power on. See what we get. And we've got a picture. Some of the adjustments, of course, need to be made, like there's vertical size, horizontal centering, uh, focus, working well. So I'd say that was a, a successful job, putting the base on this tube. And I have another, another good tube here now that I can use in future projects. So I hope you got something out of watching this and some tips on how to do this. And if you got a different way of doing it, that's perfectly fine. This way of putting this base on worked pretty easy for me. Uh, no problems. Uh, everything worked out well. So thanks for watching and see you on the next video. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.